Go ahead, Eldora, Iowa. This is Ray Geezy. You are looking at Eldora, Iowa, population 3,553, seat of Hardin County, Iowa. In Eldora, the whole town's talking. Over at the Congregational Church, a mother tells clergyman Ralph Imes that Eldora's first responsibility is to take care of the education of its own children. At the sales barn, Farmer Clampett insists that the farmers in Hardin County have the right to educate their own children in their own way. In the county courthouse, Senator Bateson tries to convince the bailiff that every child in Hardin County should have equal opportunity for the best education possible. January 10th, 1952, to Eldora, county seat with a problem, comes television to catch the face and voice of America itself. WOI-TV presents The Whole Town's Talking. Here in Eldora, Iowa, 12 citizens of Hardin County vote on an issue vital to their towns, their lives, their children. This is one of the three Eldora schools, a good building but seriously overcrowded. Eldora cannot afford enlargement or improvement. Other towns in Hardin County face similar problems. Within an hour, in full view of the television cameras in this classroom, before the eyes of their children here, their neighbors watching at home, and the entire quarter million viewing audience of WOI-TV, these 12 Iowa citizens from Witten, Ackley, Alden, New Providence, Hubbard, Union, Owasa, Iowa Falls, Steamboat Rock, Eldora, and Radcliffe will make a symbolic decision on how to solve the Hardin County school problem. Guiding them for the whole town's talking will be Ralph Imes, clergyman from Eldora, Iowa. And here on the whole town's talking vote board are the alternatives these people must face. They can stay put, keep all 53 Hardin County school districts as they are. They can vote the county's 11 district plan in which each high school district would absorb its neighboring rural areas. Or they can choose the five to eight plan calling for a survey leading to a merger of the present 11 high schools into five to eight districts. This might mean better education for the children of Hardin County, but would it destroy the spirit of the smaller towns? This afternoon, before free discussion and argument, a secret ballot taken by these 12 on this issue was stay put, one vote, 11 districts, six votes, five to eight plan, five votes. At the end of this program, to inspire their whole county to take official, democratic steps leading to the solution of Hardin County's critical school problem, they will vote again. They will press these buttons on their desks, which will light up their choice on the vote board. Before they decide, they will listen closely to what Carl Hamilton has to say. He's the editor of two newspapers, the Iowa Falls Citizen and the Hardin County Times. Carl Hamilton was born in Carroll County, he studied journalism at Iowa State College and then went to Washington and held various offices in the Department of Agriculture. He's seen a lot of this country, knows how other states solve their school problems. And now he's back in Iowa Falls, a crusading editor who has built his circulation to 3,500 readers. His fighting editorials have aroused high praise and bitter opposition. But Carl Hamilton keeps fighting, keeps crusading for what he believes to be the highest good for his own children and the children of Hardin County. It is the children who count first for Carl Hamilton. It is the children for whom he demands the best education Hardin County can afford. Carl Hamilton knows what it means to stand alone. And tonight, facing his neighbors in this Hardin County crisis, he may be standing alone again. Because on the other side of this fight is Ben Jaspers, a man highly respected in Hardin County. Ben Jaspers came up the hard way. In 1908, he was a country boy riding four miles to a town school on a one-eyed horse. He was the first boy in his one-room school district to go to high school and the first to graduate. Ben is a grandfather now. He's seen a lot of improvements in schools, but he wants them even better for his little grandson, Kendall, and the other children. His neighbors trust him, like him, admire him. They remember him as a boy who had been through Sears Reader only twice when he started town school at the age of 13 
who had never been more than a dozen miles away from the farm where he was born. He's seen hard times with them, lived through three depressions. Now, he's Ben Jasper's banker, leading citizen of Steamboat Rock, Iowa, president of Hardin County School Board, man of many pursuits. He spent his whole life in an American small town. He believes in a small town values, in the home, church, the school. He believes in the men and women who work to keep them strong. Ben Jaspers, of the small town, for the small town, who tonight leads the fight to preserve what he believes to be a truly American way of life. Ben, uh, what do you think of this editorial here that Carl Hamilton carried in the Hardy County Times on uh, January 8th, Tuesday, January 8th? Uh, don't you think he was sort of sounding off? Oh, well, that's nothing new. Carl's always sounding off. You notice the headlines here? It says, Propose 11 administrative units in Hardin County. Jaspers will show map of proposed units for the first time on television discussion Thursday night. Ben, just what is that? Well, Ralph, it is a fact that the Hardin County Board of Education did adopt a tentative map in their meeting last Monday afternoon. But uh, I suppose that you were referring, uh, referring to the editorial that Carl had in there about the cart before the horse. Was that it? That's right. Well, Carl's always horsing around, and I doubt whether he's got a cart to get a horse behind as far as that goes. <laughs> but the school question has been kicked around for a number of years in the state of Iowa, and there are many groups been interested in it, among which are the Iowa, Education, or Iowa Educational Association and farm groups and many others who have been interest, interested in school reorganization. A number of years, a law was passed uh, which pretended to be a reorganization law, but uh, didn't work out very well because it was the kind of a thing that wasn't acceptable to the people of Iowa. You mean the people didn't like it, is that it? No, the people didn't like it for the simple reason that the that the thing was designed to be administered from the top down. That's one of the objections. The other great objection was that, that the law had a tendency to consolidate or, or contract the uh, administrative units to one or two in the county. Now that was really what the law was designed for. Now we all know that the people of Iowa and the people of Hardin County don't go for that kind of a program. Now, I think that the word organization is an ill-chosen word. A reorganization den the, uh, denotes defeat or distress, failure. And I'm sure that uh, anonymous believe that the school program in the state of Iowa has ever been in that situation. Now then, I think that a term to be used which would be far more acceptable, is a school improvement program, which is really what we're talking about. Now, this, this is nothing new in particular. In particular, uh, school improvement has been going on for years in Hardin County and in every other county in the state of Iowa. Now, there are some throughout the state that would have you believe that unless you do something radically or revolutionary, that the whole educational system in the state of Iowa will collapse uh, by its own weight of inefficiency. We don't think that that's the case at all. As far as school improvement is concerned, it's been going on for 50 years. Now, I don't think there's anybody going to dispute that statement because... Uh, if they do, it's just because they haven't been close enough to the educational program or that they haven't lived long enough. Now then, we do have some maps here that we want to show you that the board has introduced, and I'm going to just take the liberty of walking over here to show them. <clears throat> At the present time, the county is divided into 53 districts, 53 administrative units, or in other words, there are 53 boards of directors and 53 school setups in the county. That does not mean 
that we have necessarily 53 schools. I'll come to that in just a few moments. Now to replace this present situation, the 